There are these one extreme energized rabbits that will say, this is the perfect time. I can write 50 paper in my home. And if I'm not doing five online courses and finish all of this backlog of data analysis, then I am not doing my pandemic right. But man, this is a pandemic. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Today, I'd like to answer a question from one of my viewers. Screw Dangerous Real Cat asks, how do we become productive with the context of this pandemic? She says she is not feeling very much like a PhD scholar because she can't be in the lab and she is just home all the time and quite isolated. I think this is a really important question for Screw Danger Real Cat. She is at the very early phase of her PhD. So this video is about how you can start a PhD despite the pandemic and still having some productivity. As a first year PhD student, you often have coursework and that already would keep you quite busy. One of the biggest mistakes that students could make is they don't think about their PhD research early enough and they don't plan early enough. Even at home, you can get yourself familiarized with some of the research that you could be doing. If I simplify a PhD into three major tasks, you are going to do more research, lab work and writing in different proportions of your day from the first year to the final year and your writing could be increased over time but in the very beginning on first year i can simplify your day similar to this you may be spending a lot of time in class it's easy to forget about the other few aspects of your first year phd and i hope to remind that you need to start now to start writing your idea, research the methodology and what's the best way to achieve your research objective. This is even possible from your own home. Notice that there are research protocol that are documented very well in the Jove journal, the journal of visualized experiment. And even you are not at the lab and you have some idea about how to construct your research, that is the best time to first do your research from home and watch those videos, how people do such research projects and have an envisioning whether you have the instrument in your institution, do you need to buy reagents? Think ahead and talk to your PI in advance. I think we can do this histology project, but we really need to order these chemicals like antibody that will take a few months. So this is a time if you think ahead, you can pre-order reagents that you need. You can start thinking in that context of what if the lab open and you need to do those work and reagents are not there, then you need to wait another few months, right? This is my first suggestion is to prepare yourself with the work, writing a protocol, watching other people's protocol and put a list there and purchase everything and coordinate with your PI with the budget and resources. As soon as you get to the lab, you can start working. Another question would be about motivation. I know this is a really difficult time and right now on social media, I see two-sided opinion about the pandemic in academia. There are these one extreme energized rabbits that will say, this is the perfect time I can write 50 paper in my home. And if I'm not doing five online courses and finish all of this backlog of data analysis, then I am not doing my pandemic right. But man, this is a pandemic. Some people may be struggling with anxiety. They might be having loved ones to take care of. They might have elderly at home. So take care of yourself first and make sure you are healthy and happy take care of your family and this is not an easy time for anyone your perspective of productivity is not supposed to be the same some people have less burden than yes you can be productive some people have 
children at home and you have to homeschool them now because they cannot go to school. So be reasonable, define your one thing that you want to do or two things that you want to do that very next day. Before you go to sleep, write down your goal and the next day wake up and block out two hours, get those done. And you can have incremental productivity that in one month you will look back and think, you know, I'm really glad I forced myself to write those down because if you don't write it down, you have a much lower chance of actually doing that work. As a PhD student, you will only have more and more research projects in the future and busier and busier schedule as you started your lab experiments, assuming you're in life sciences like me. During this time at home, you have the computer and resources, the space to think about your work in a bigger context. So one thing I would recommend you to do is to really brush up your illustration skills because every student in PhD, they will have a first chapter and your first figure in your first chapter is most likely an illustration of your holistic idea of why you're doing this PhD. So it could be simple as drawing out those beakers and flask and putting them into color that makes sense for your experiment. It's going to save you time in the future when you have to defend your PhD project. One thing that Schrodinger Real Cat asked is she doesn't feel very much like a scholar. It is easy to feel that way because you're no longer in that glassy building that you're going to work that has automatic doors that opens for you. You're just at your own home doing the same routine, have simple similar meal every day because you can't even go out to the restaurant. I think this is a common struggle to not remembering you are a scientist when you are by yourself. PI could have mixed feeling about social media. The older PI will see social media as a distraction but to me I have really gained a lot of professional experience and network with people on social media and right now if you know how to connect with people on Twitter and if you find the right hashtag find the right group of people to hang out with I think that will give you a little sense of community also did you know that you guys can tag me on Instagram and ask any question you have for your PhD. This is an example. I've got a question from Weir Academica from last week. She is nervous about meeting her advisor before her monthly meeting. So here are my responses. You can take the full advantage of social media now to reach any expert you don't know in person and build a relationship with. From my experience, I found Creating a PhD coffee time Instagram separate from my personal account really helpful because if you have your personal Instagram, you can't help but browsing everyone's life. Ever since I have a PhD coffee time Instagram, I could use it to only follow the accounts that I know are helpful to the PhD studies. Especially right now, a lot of your conferences are cancelled. I have talked to a friend of mine, his trip to South Africa got cancelled. I would be really sad if that was my case because South Africa is such a beautiful place. But we are living in that reality that uh, many of us are actually disappointed for not being able to travel, not being able to connect with our group of scholars. But the beauty of internet is you can join webinars for free. The tech company and association like American Chemistry Association they give free webinars that you can learn science, you can ask questions at real time, and they are for free. And I think those are really helpful way to remember that you are a scientist and you go to the right webinar in the right chat room, then you feel more connected. Of course, you can't have unlimited time going to webinars. I've already made two videos talking about how you could choose your professional development webinars using 10% of your week. It depends on which trimester of the PhD you are at right now. And the last point is have your own coffee break culture. I made this channel called PhD Coffee Time is really because 
I wished more people in research could take a little moment in the coffee break to connect with each other. This is kind of ironic because I have taken a lot of coffee break in my academic career just by myself and there were not a lot of academic exchange, social support that happens during a coffee break. To me, having a coffee before was like a chore and it felt like I need this caffeine in my system and I need to start working. But there is a value in having this social moment and having this connection and exchange of free flowing idea with your colleagues. So why don't you organize one and talk to your friends that is in your same research unit or someone you met on Twitter, or someone you met on LinkedIn, have a virtual coffee break and talk about stuff. I spoke about how you could organize journal club meeting to help you think more deeply in your subject. This can go on virtual platform as well so if you have a few people that are convinced in your department that wants to do journal club regularly that is the perfect thing you can initiate during this difficult time when everyone is at home and that way you don't feel isolated and the pandemic will be slightly easier so i hope this helps you in this pandemic i have a whole list of videos that's made helping PhD in the pandemic, like you could use your time researching literature. You can also optimize your Skype system. When you are chatting online, how should you behave on Skype? I have all these little videos covering all this technical part, but I think this video, I hope this address the more fundamental unrest that we have at this point of the pandemic. And I hope everyone is safe and I hope this video brings you a little bit of peace. If you like my video, make sure you subscribe to my channel and share this with your loved ones. I really hope that I can reach to more students that are needing this advice. And thank you for watching and I will see you the next time.